Welcome back to another edition of Music Monday from the podcast, Nurture the Mind. I am your host, Cole Poots, and we have yet again another music reaction. And this week, we are sticking with the artist that we did last week, Mr. Ren himself. And I just want to give a quick thanks to the renegade universe you guys went absolutely fucking crazy and completely did some numbers on that first reaction that i did of high ren i had no idea what i was tapping into i was not ready for that i was not ready for that type of reception um, all of the comments were super nice, super welcoming. You guys gave a lot of suggestions for the route that I should take going forward if I choose to listen to Ren. And I was certainly intrigued after that first listen. So I want to hear more of what this man has to offer um, because that was a great first song choice to listen to. I apologize because I cannot respond to everybody. <laughs> There were so many comments, but I tried to read as much of them as I could. I'll probably get some things wrong. Just the nature of all of that information coming in at one time. There's going to be some details that I forget because a lot of you guys filled me in on his story. You know what he's all about, some of the things that he's gone through. So I'll try to do my best to remember all of that and to try and keep that in mind. But you guys will have to bear with me because, again, I'm still very much new to Ren, uh, his music, and this whole universe called the Renegades, which I think is a sick fucking name for a group of people to be called. Before we get into the music, because you guys are called the Renegades, I want to give you guys a little bit of a story, a little bit of a background. So when I was in high school, I had a good group of friends, a good group of guy friends. There was mainly four of us that did this certain activity, this, this particular activity. We used to get very bored in the summer, especially living in Iowa. I live in Indianola, Iowa, if you guys don't know where that's at. It's a smaller town and there's not much to do here, you know, especially in the summer. And when you're a young kid like that, you're just kind of bugging your brain, especially with your buddies. You're like, what do we go out and do? Like, let's go cause some freaking havoc. Let's go cause some chaos. So we decided, because you have a high school here in town, you have a middle school here in town, and then you have Irving, Emerson, Woodier, and Wilder. You have four elementary schools that are in this town. And so we decided that we were going to go climb on top of the rooftops of each of the schools if we could. And ultimately, you know, we didn't want to stop at just climbing up to the top of the roof. If we were able to find access, we were trying to get into the schools. Now, I would never condone this activity. You know, I did this years ago when I was a young kid, but again, we were trying to find something to do in the dead heat of summer. I mean, we would do it at nighttime, obviously, so we wouldn't get caught. And we came up with a name for this group and we called ourselves the Rooftop Renegades. So I find that it's very fitting that, you know, because we really embraced the Rooftop Renegades, that whole image, you know, and then we'd go out and we'd tell other people in the school. So we all came up with that name and I find it amazing that you guys, this whole universe that gets behind Ren is called the Renegades. So I feel like it was meant for us to cross each other's paths in a line, because a lot of you have been saying in the comments, you know, it's not gonna take very long for you, Cole, to become one of us, to become a renegade. And in a way, I kind of feel like before we all met each other, I was already a renegade. You guys were renegades. It was just a matter of time that we were gonna cross each other's paths. So anyways, little story there, but the second choice of Ren that I'm gonna listen to is I'm gonna honor my friend Danny, who was the one that set me on this path, said, you need to go listen to Hi Ren. And then she sent me a second choice, which is Sick Boy. Now, when I was trying to pull up the music video, the link that she sent to me, it looked like it got taken down from the internet or from YouTube. 
Um, but when I searched it in YouTube, there is an official music video, but it's on a different account by the name of Christian David. But I've looked at a lot of the comments on this video, people that were thanking this guy for posting it and keeping the video alive, keeping the art alive. So fill me in on that. Um, if it really did, you know, the music video on Ren's profile, if it got taken down, if this is the official one, it looks like the official one. So we're going to treat it as such. So yeah, without further ado, we got Ren, we got Sick Boy. <laughs> What did she say? Your mind is what? I'm gonna go back for a second. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's just start over. This sounds like it's gonna be a rap. I'm breathing heavy. Essentially, your mind is making you sick. I think that's what she said. It almost looks like he's in the same setting from that other video. And there's that pig in the mat, the masked pig. experiences from the past that are keeping you stuck. What can you tell me about your childhood? I can't really think. It's okay if nothing comes up right away. What I'd like you to do is take some deep breaths with me. In and out. Meditation, it's the cure. Good. Now tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. I feel like it's not me. It's the world that's it. We're giving everything we need to make them all the kind of We just you, we destroy like a camera stick. Science comes to this. Sick Boy by Ren. Obviously a lot quicker at 3 minutes and 13 seconds as opposed to Hi Ren 
which goes for over nine minutes. So it's quicker, it's more fast paced. It feels like an, a, a typical rap and hip hop song, especially with the beat and then definitely his flows. I didn't catch all of the lyrics, but I did catch on to some. And I think once again, this man is speaking utter facts. So it feels like to me that the main thing that he was talking about, again, is mental illness, which is what he has struggled with, that psychosis. And he's got this doctor, therapist, whatever you want to call her, that's sitting right across the table from him, asking him these series of questions. And I think one of the more interesting responses that he has is he says that, you know, basically, basically the system is designed in a way in which they try to patch things up is they prescribe medicine to people. And that's pretty much their, their go-to. Again, it's something that I can relate to. I told you guys a little bit in the last video about some of my struggles with OCD. You know, my issues really started to flare up in 2019. And I remember at the end of 2019, like September or something like that, I was contemplating moving from Ames back to my hometown of Indianola. And I met up with a doctor because I was severely depressed and very anxious at the time. And I remember when I went in there and essentially had that first consultation with the doctor, we sat down for maybe like five minutes and he asked me, you know, what's wrong, what's going on, blah, 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 blah. Like just very uh, generic questions and I just, I didn't really go too much into depth as to what I was experiencing, but I just said, you know, this is how I've been feeling. I've been feeling this way for a while, feeling very depressed, feeling very anxious. And there was no follow-up conversation. There was no extended dialogue on his part, but basically his solution was here, we're going to prescribe you this medication, sertraline at 25 milligrams, and you're going to take this and this is supposed to help you. And I was so pissed off by that because it was like, that's it. All I had to say was that I was feeling this way and you're just going to prescribe me medication. There's no deeper dive. There's no follow up questions that actually try to get to the root of the problem. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use medication because I eventually did get on medication and I am still to this day on medication but it, I was just baffled at the fact that I literally could have walked into the doctor's office and said, hey doc, I'm feeling kind of sad. My dog just died. It's been hard. I've been crying a lot this week. You know, what should I do? And I guarantee that the same response from that doctor would have been here. Let's put you on some medication. Instead of having a realistic conversation, which should have been like, hey Cole, it is normal for you to be experiencing these feelings because you just lost a lifelong pet. That's a hard thing to go through for a lot of people if you've built this emotional connection and this emotional bond with your pet. And so it's easy for the medical system to essentially just prescribe these medications, which I am not even convinced that they actually work. I think they work in the beginning. I think they work in the meantime. I think they are a band-aid of sorts that you can put on, especially if you are in a very, very low spot and you need to kind of reset your baseline. I do think they can help. I, th I think they do overall have a positive effect. But if you look at the studies, they're very much just a placebo uh, drug. You think that they're helping you. Your mind thinks that these drugs are helping you. And so in return for believing that, it's actually your brain and your belief that is thinking, hey, like these things are helping me, but actually you're doing it to yourself. That, that's the first thing that I notice is him essentially combating that and then throwing it back in her face like, hey, 
This is how we try and solve our problems, whether it be in America, and it sounds like this also goes on maybe out in the UK. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, that's that's where he's from. But the medical system at large is just really screwed up in a lot of ways to say like, hey, you're we're going to give you these pills, but we're not going to recommend you know, going and talking to a therapist or some other type of strategy. Like, it's just, I don't know. In a lot of ways, I feel like the system is actually broken. That's the biggest thing that I noticed. This, this song is so short and it's so quickly paced. So I think what I'm going to do for reaction purposes is I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to listen to it one more time to see what else I can catch. So let's do that once more here. time through yeah second time through with sick boy and there's a little bit more to speak on yeah i feel like the entire theme of the song is really aimed at the medical system society culture he's having again a back and forth conversation maybe not necessarily with himself this time but him and then the lady that's sitting across the table from him, you know, who's there in all purposes intended to help him get better. But he basically flips at some point and says, I'm not the one that's sick. You're the one that's sick. You hypocrite. Putting us in this position. Constantly wanting more. 
It's so hard to get all the lyrics, man. I can't remember them. I feel like I'm under pressure right here as I'm trying to recall. But essentially saying, hey, like you're giving me these drugs. You're, you're trying to give me this quick fix. But then after I take these drugs, they're side effects. They always tell you, they told me this, they tell everybody that when you're getting on antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication, SSRIs, when you get on them, it takes about a month to six weeks to really get acclimated to the medicine. But they say that you can almost expect that there's going to be side effects at some point. And I've also heard too, I haven't gotten off of the medication just yet. Like I said, in 2019, I started taking sertraline at 25 milligrams. And then eventually I had to go up to 50 because 25 wasn't working. Then eventually I had to go up to 100 because 50 was not working. I have also heard, you know, even though I have not gotten off the medication just yet, but that is my intention to do that. I heard that it is incredibly hard to get off of these medications as well. I mean, because your body essentially becomes so dependent on it that just like anything else, when you try to get off of it, if you try to wean off of it, your body is basically going through withdrawals. And I think essentially what Ren is saying is that there should be a better way to quote unquote handle somebody who's dealing with mental health or has a mental illness. I really like the way that he spun it in that song and he's saying that, no, I'm not the one that's sick. You guys are the ones that are sick. You're a profit hungry money making machine at the expense of the people that you claim to serve. Because medication alone, like I was saying, I don't think is a one solve fix all problem. That's the I think that's what I was trying to get to with the doctors and whatnot, is they look at these umbrella of people, clients that, that come in and out of their office and they say that, well, we're just going to treat it with this one thing, this one solution, which is medication. And that's not a very nuanced approach to the whole situation because every individual is different. Every individual based on what they've gone through is different. You know, you look at a guy like Ren dealing with psychosis. If that is like the true definition and nature of what he was experiencing. And then for me, you know, it was a lot of anxiety. It was a lot of OCD. So those are two separate branches within mental health and getting um, some type of diagnosis. So you can't treat those situations the same by just giving out medication. You got to treat them differently. There has to be a nuanced approach. And so again, I miss so many lyrics, but it seems like in that song, being titled Sick Boy, kind of going against the medications and these big corporations, these big companies like pharma that are, you know, being able to profit off of this. Essentially, I feel like he's going in on them. He's attacking them. And he's saying just in society and culture that we have it all wrong. We're not focused on the right things. We're not prioritizing the right things. And in a lot of ways, I think that's what causes this mental health epidemic. And I think I was kind of saying that in the first song, Hi Ren, is that, you know, we've kind of lost our way as a society and a culture. Obviously things have to evolve and change and transform. Like I'm not denying that. I'm all for that. And I understand that that's going to happen from now. It's always happened before in the past and it's going to continue to happen in the future. That's just how life is designed. But that doesn't mean that in certain ways that we've evolved and expanded, that doesn't mean that those ways in which we've evolved are actually helping the human condition right now. It'd be interesting to see and here and maybe run a study or a poll, you know, even to say 50 years ago when these phones and these screens were not present in our lives, like what was the overall general consensus of happiness and connection in the world? You know, not, not just in America, not just uh, in the UK, but like all across the world, like how did people feel generally? 
I think obviously social media and the devices have brought us closer in a lot of ways because we can connect like this. You know, people all across the world can come over to my YouTube channel and can watch my reaction. And, and that's amazing. That's a beautiful thing. That's one of the, the net positives that we have from social media. But we've also taken it too far that we spend way too much time on these screens and we spend way so too much time where we're disconnected from one another and we're not seeking out those experiences with other humans in our lives, the people that we really love, you know, that truly make us feel connected. So it feels like, because it's, it's so hard with Ren, man, he's, he's giving you so much to process and I feel like that's why I had so much to say on that first reaction and I'm struggling right now to try and piece all of my thoughts together. It seems like, yes, he's talking about his own experience of being physically sick, but the, being mentally sick, because he also said something about derealization in there, but I feel like he's kind of pointing to humanity as a whole right now, where we're at in 2024, and he's basically asking everybody to rethink what they're doing. Uh, like maybe there's a better way of going about this uh, so all of us can kind of, you know, limit those sim symptoms that we feel from mental health, from struggling with mental health. I, I got to, again, give you guys a lot of props in the comments. I saw a lot of comments on that last video and people were basically, you know, giving me props for talking about my struggles with OCD. And there was one person in particular that was saying that essentially it is a mindset. It is something that you can overcome. It is something that you can conquer. And they said, you know, it's easier said than done. Obviously that's a hard thing and it takes a lot of intentional work to get over it. And then the want and the desire to get over it and you got to make it a consistent habit, but it, it can be done. And you know, I love seeing messages and comments like that because it's just reinforcement for me. You know, I've come a long way since 2019 when I was really going through all of my issues and no, it is not perfect, but it is a whole hell of a lot better than it used to be. And I imagine it's gotten a lot better for Ren too. That's also what you guys alluded to in the comments about how things have definitely gotten better for him, but he's not over the hump when it comes to uh, the physical sickness and the mental sickness. But I feel like in a nutshell, he's calling for all of us to rethink what we're doing and come up with a better approach as to how to handle these things. And I didn't even really talk about just his rapping and just how the song sounded. Um, that was really good. You know, that hit that this song right here is a little bit more down my avenue because uh, growing up in high school especially, I listened to a lot of hip hop and rap. That's where a lot of my influences come from. And that was arguably could be said that that was a freaking banger in terms of the beat. It had me nodding my head and just going, oh, bow, bow. And I listened to it twice. So on the, I think on the second listen, I got into it even a little bit more. I'm assuming this is like a song that would, the more that you listen to it, it's probably just going to grow on you even more uh, with more listens. But you guys were right. I mean, shit, he can rap too, man. He's got flows. There was a section in that song where he was going on some type of rhyme scheme and he was pulling up all of these different words and i'm like oh my god dude like he's a freaking lyricist like that's a hard thing to do i don't care what your domain is in music i don't care what your genre is that is a hard thing to do that that lyrical ability and there's only a few out there that can do it and there's some that have worked their asses off that didn't necessarily have that as a talent or came to them naturally, but that was amazing to listen to. And it already shows going from high Ren to sick boy, just the amount of versatility that this man has. And again, that's what you guys said in the comments is like telling me that I'm gonna be amazed with how much 
you know, he can expand. He doesn't just do one thing very well. He does a lot of different things very well. So second listen, man, from Ren, again, very uh, thoroughly impressed. I apologize if this reaction feels a little bit scattered. Um, that was just, a, that was a shorter song, right? So it's like, and it's going faster. It's a faster pace. I feel like the first song, obviously longer, but slower internally that you're able to pay attention a lot more. I, I was paying attention here. I just think everything was kind of thrown at me very fast. So that's why I had to listen to it a second time. I'm sure if I go through it a third and a fourth time, there's going to be even more things that I pick up on, but um, solid song, solid choice. And uh, man, this has been a great first introduction to Ren and I can't wait to listen to more material of his. I once again have to thank all of you guys that came over to the channel. I've never seen uh, that big of a jump on my channel in the span of like three or four days. I mean, you guys came in droves. You guys came in numbers. So hopefully we can keep that up because we're closing in on a thousand subscribers. So if you guys could do me a solid, as I say at the end of every video, there's four things, please just do one of them. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment in the comment section below, and share the video, share the message. And the last little thing here as a first form legionnaire, um, the way that you can help me out is by going to my website link and buying one of their products. Uh, they have a bunch of great supplements. They've got energy drinks. Um, I've got protein powder. They've got uh, protein bars. I mean, they got literally everything that you can think of and they have really helped me out in my fitness journey. So if you guys are interested in any of their products, obviously go do your research, but you can get some of those products if you go click on my, my link that's down in the description, down in the comments. But anyways, guys, once again, thanks for coming over. It's been a great experience. I can't wait to do another reaction of Ren. Thank you for all of the support, and I will see you guys on the next, next reaction. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya.